Next month marks the 44th anniversary of man's first trip to the moon. American astronaut Neil Armstrong was the first human to step onto the moon's surface, arriving aboard the spacecraft Apollo 11 with fellow crew members Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins. Right now, several teams around the world are racing to land the first private robot on the moon in a contest sponsored by internet giant Google. There's a lot at stake with a lot of building, computing, and dreaming. America's now contributing correspondent Yakenda McGehee shows us how some teams are planning to win the multi-million dollar grand prize. It's a fine Martian day we have. The sun's about ready to come up at Gale Crater. It's going to be warm. It's going to be sunny. August 2012, space exploration reached the next frontier, the Red Planet. As NASA's most expensive and advanced Mars rover ever assembled, executed arguably the most difficult landing ever attempted. The vehicle's just reported via tones that it has started guided entry. We're safe on Mars. Pretty extraordinary and I guess unprecedented yeah. because now we have the, um, the new space economy for commercial space since NASA is recreating itself into um, uh, from what it was before. Right. So the collaboration between industry and federal government, I think is, you're going to really see it increase now. Thanks in part to Mars Curiosity. In much the same way, man has always had a similar curiosity with our nearest galactic neighbor, the moon. And now that NASA is shifting its focus to Mars and beyond, commercial space exploration is shifting into high gear. The countdown has started for a space mission unlike anything ever attempted. In 2007, Google and XPRIZE launched the Google Lunar X competition, an international race to the moon. Not a government, but a privately funded team prepares to make history. It's a $30 million prize to the first privately funded team to safely land a robot on the moon, travel 500 meters over the lunar surface, then transmit images back to Earth. Now I mean you. Now what? 25 teams around the globe are vying for that coveted title, most of them based right here in America. Indeed, it's curiosity which sent America's Now roving across the country to meet some of these magnificent minds. I'm Dr. Japheth Doswell, director and founder of the Google Lunar X Prize German team. Mm -hmm. Stands for Juxtopia Urban Robotics Brilliant Application Network. So the whole purpose of the German team was to encourage underserved and disadvantaged populations especially from um, underserved minority groups. And the city of Baltimore in Maryland, Gerben's home base, has perhaps one of the most disadvantaged minority communities in the country. Long considered the heroin capital of the United States, for years this historic city has struggled with violent crime, gang activity, and urban decay. Baltimore, unlike a lot of cities that I've traveled to in a lot of countries, there's grit. It's like to dig deep right, make it happen no matter what the obstacles mm -hmm. and do it. So, what, so that what differentiates us, I think, from other teams is that we have that grit. And Team Gerben has a philosophy that no matter your background, if you reach for the stars, you can get to the moon. When we first started, we were the only team that had um, all African Americans mm -hmm. on the team. So it was like Tuskegee Airmen mm -hmm. for space exploration, right. right? And we've diversified. Now, it's comprised 100% of students where you have professionals acting as advisors. We have students from 15 all the way to, you know, 21, okay, young people. Like 16-year-old team member Lakshmi Raju, who developed a miniature-sized low-cost spectrometer to locate water on the moon. 16. She was 15 when I first met her, but she's getting and old now. I'm not a space nerd. <laughs> They're bringing both the creativity and also the hunger to actually get something done. We may be seen as the underdog. You know, we may not have all the resources in the world, but we have that, that, you know, that drive, that will, that passion to get this thing done. And what they lack in funding, they make up for 
ingenious. My name is Blaze Sanders. I am the technical program manager. And Blaze is the brains behind the blueprint. So our robotic lander is an earthworm-like robot that uses peristaltic motion, uh, kind of like an earthworm to crawl along the surface. So as the robot segments would contract like this and one part would contact the surface and then the next segment in front of it would expand. Inside the worm bot, a complex configuration of cameras and electronics. We chose that because wheels can get clogged up. Uh, there's a lot of problems. We can pack the robot a lot tighter uh, since it doesn't have any extruding wheels and actually be able to shoot them across the moon and not have to worry about crawling as much. You heard him right. Why walk, roll, or crawl when you can essentially cannonball across the finish line? Hmm, clever as are a few of their other strategies. GRC-3 is basically the closest thing that exists to um, moon dust here on Earth and allows us to test how well our electronics hold up against the dirt to keep dust out from getting into our internal uh, components and making them blow up, which would be a bad thing. The Gerben team isn't afraid to throw a few competitive darts either because a little friendly fire can't hurt when trying to lay claim to a $30 million purse. But I think we have a really good chance because we're keeping it a lot simpler than a lot of these other companies. One of the leading teams, Astrobotic, has an eight foot tall robot, uh, which is huge. They have to buy an entire launch vehicle. Um, we can share a ride. So who is this big name team with big money backing and an even bigger robot to boot? We traveled to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, an old steel mill town that was once the beating heart of America's industrial age. A town that has just entered into America's new space age. My name's John Thornton. Thanks to Carnegie Mellon University's prestigious Robotics Institute. And I'm the president of Astrobotic. And Team Astrobotic's ambitious goals. The X Prize is just the beginning. It's just a catalyst to get started. Uh, so we, we imagine us to be a little bit like FedEx or UPS to the moon. Astrobotics last year became the competition's first team to announce a launch date. Our launch date is October 19th, 2015. And one of the few teams sending two different rovers on two separate missions. And one of the only teams building their own lander. This is our lander that's going to take us to the lunar surface. So everything that's aluminum colored on this lander is, is fully space qualified. So this deck plate, uh, this cone in the center here, and, and some structure underneath, it's all uh, space certified. So you're touching real flight hardware right now. Our rover is going to ride right up on top here, uh, and it'll descend down on these ramps. As it unfolds, uh, you can see this third segment uh, it gets to a point where it's basically flat so that if there's any rocks, uh, it's safe. But if you ask Kevin Peterson, the director of guidance and navigation control, landing is no easy task. It could actually make or break a mission, which is where software engineer Winnie Tabib comes in. On the moon, there's no GPS. So in order to determine your position and orientation, you have to use data from sensors. Which requires a complicated series of algorithms and mathematical computations that most of our meager minds can't even conceive. Suffice to say, they've clearly created an alternative navigation system using sensor data. Avionics engineer Steve McGuire. So what we have here is a terrestrial prototype of our landing sensor package. We've got two cameras, mm -hmm. one on each side. Uh, this black box in the middle that uh, you see here with the, yeah. with the mirror there is a laser that sweeps back and forth and gives us the range to each point along its little plane down to millimeters. Because in space, mistakes and mass cost money, making every millimeter and every kilo count. So Team Astrobotics is experimenting with and constructing new ways to reduce weight while preserving strength. Would you believe this flimsy, lightweight aluminum honeycomb is the main structure of the rover? That is, after it's wrapped in carbon fiber, cooked in an on-site oven three hours at 350 degrees. The result is this, an ultra-light, ultra-stiff, ultra-strong rover structure. That lightweight structure, says the team's mechanical engineer, Aaron Acton, allows their rover to bear additional loads. 
This robot was designed to carry multiple different payloads, so we could potentially mount other digging equipment to collect samples. And as you drive along, this will be spinning, and it will slowly pick up samples of the regolith and dump it into a bin. Think building a lander or rover are impressive feats? We think you might want to meet California's Team Synergy Moon, because they're building it all. So says Randa Milleron and her husband, Chief Engineer Roderick Milleron. We are the only team that is actually not only building the lander and the, and, and the rover, but also building the launch vehicle to take the, that payload to the surface of the moon. And they're doing it at minimal costs, maximum profits. Which means that you, you can actually, if, you win, if the prize is, if we win the prize, we actually can make a profit off of the prize. We're not spending more to go to the moon than the prize is offering. So that, 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 that in itself is a, is, a, is a big difference because some of the other teams are buying launches and they're a lot, they're fairly expensive. While teams may have different costs and approaches, they share similar philosophies. So, uh, you know, for us, the important thing is human space travel and sustained presence on the moon and exploration beyond. And in the end, similar goals. It's going to open up the skies. It's going to reimagine the way we think about space access. Goals not focused on winning a moon prize, but leading the space race. Yakenda McGahey, thank you for that report. We'd love to hear from you about this story and all America's Now stories. Please write to us at an at cctv-america.com. Or you can send us a tweet. Our handle is at cctvamericasnow.